Hi guys, welcome to Mendoza Makes. I'm Michelle Mendoza and today we're making scones. Scones are the baker's perfect blank canvas dough recipe that you can use to make whatever flavor combination you can possibly think of. It's the perfect thing to experiment with different flavors and see what comes out. What I'm gonna do is use a base recipe for the scone dough and split it in half because I'm gonna make half sweet and half savory. The difference between the two is just the amount of vanilla extract you use in the sweet ones and the amount of sugar. If you're making savory scones, you omit the vanilla extract and you use a reduced amount of sugar. If you're making sweet ones, use all the full amount of sugar and vanilla extract or you can add another flavoring extract if you want to use that. So I'm going to do half of mine with walnuts, raisins, and I think I'll do some vanilla extract and some almond extract to bring out like the nutty flavor in the walnuts. And then I'm going to top those with cinnamon sugar. So it'll be a cinnamon raisin walnut-y type scone. I think that'll be good. And then I'm also going to make a cheddar jalapeno one and I'm going to make some garlic herb butter to go with it. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen pictures of our garden that we're growing right now. So I'm gonna use some of that to my advantage and get some fresh herbs from the garden, add some garlic, and just kind of knead it into the butter to make it garlic herb butter. And then I, um, we can use that as the butter with the savory jalapeno cheddar scones, which I think will be really good. So that's the plan. Let's do it. For the garlic herb butter, you can use whatever herbs you have around or that you like the taste of. I'm gonna use parsley, rosemary, and oregano. And of course, garlic. I'm just gonna knead it into the butter until it's smooth and well distributed. Then wrap it tightly in plastic wrap and stick it in the fridge until I'm ready to use it. For the basic scone dough, it works a lot like pie dough, if you've ever made that, where you add your flour and your sugar and then you break up the bits of butter Cold butter is important to use because you want the scone to have some flaky layers and that happens when you have chunks of butter that melt when they go into the oven, leaving behind these puffy layers. So if you just take the chunks of butter, I find it helpful to cut them into squares first and then take the chunks of butter and kind of push them into the flour, tear them with your fingers and break them up a little bit to make a shaggy dough. You can also do this with a food processor or a stand mixer if you prefer. And since I was making half savory and half sweet, I just went through this process twice. This is the point where you would add your flavorings, your ingredients, whatever you're going to add. I added half a cup each of cheddar cheese, jalapeno, walnuts, and then these boxes of raisins. Two boxes was actually perfect half cup measurement, so that worked out great. Then just mix it into the dry ingredients. Then mix up the wet ingredients that we're gonna add to the dry ingredients. For the sweet one, I included the vanilla extract and a little bit of almond extract to bring out the nutty flavor of the walnuts. Just give that a good stir and then add it to the dry mixture. And then the same for the savory one, except for I left out the vanilla extract in this one. Scone dough can get pretty sticky, so using parchment paper and a bit of flour on a sheet pan can help it not stick so bad. The walnut raisin one was definitely harder to contend with. It was very sticky. Once you have them in rounds, just take a bench scraper or a knife and cut them into wedges. And what we're gonna do is pull the wedges away from each other so that it, the air in the oven can circulate around and bake them correctly. 
I found that using a rubber spatula to help me with this was very helpful because the walnut raisin one was so sticky. Getting a little rubber spatula under there to help me pull it apart was very helpful. So I'd recommend that if you find that your dough is really sticky. They didn't really stay in wedges, but that's okay. They don't need to be in wedges. There's also something called drop scones where you kind of just drop them on the cookie sheet and don't cut them into wedges, and they're just as tasty. The jalapeno cheddar ones were much easier to contend with, and I found that again using a rubber spatula and just kind of gently putting it underneath and then pulling it away, kind of like you do with a piece of pizza, made it a lot easier. Once you have your wedges all separated out, brush the tops of them with milk. This helps the toppings stick if you're putting any toppings on them. It also hydrates the dough and the fat in the milk will brown in the oven. So the walnut raisin one I topped with cinnamon sugar. And the jalapeno cheddar one I topped with a little bit more cheddar. And now they're ready for the oven. So as these were baking, it was very confusing. Since I baked them on the same tray, it was a very confusing smell because I would like get a whiff of the, the cinnamon from the sweet ones and I was like, mmm, you know, it smells like kind of snickerdoodles or something. And then I'd get a whiff of like spicy jalapeno and I'm like, wait, what am I making again? But I'm excited because they smell really good. Have your scones warm. They're so much better when they're warm, fresh from the oven, or just warm them up for a couple seconds before you, before you eat them. They're so much better that way. So I'm gonna try the cinnamon raisin one. Mmm. Ooh, I really like the cinnamon sugar on the top. The almond extract is a little strong in this. I think I would put less, but it's good with the walnut flavor. And then you get it like a raisin, and it's like, ooh, yeah, a little bit sweet. Delicious. I don't think it needs anything, but I guess you could put some, some jam with it. I have some raspberry jam, so I think I'm gonna have some of that with it. There's a lot of flavor in that. Like nutty, sweet, cinnamony, then you get a raisin. There's a lot going on. That's really good. I'm just gonna try the jalapeno one by itself first. It's very soft. I'm really surprised that it's not like so spicy because of how many, like I can see all of the bits of jalapeno in here and oh, it just has this like green, little bit of the spice, but like the cheddar is really good. Oh man, that's good. Okay, let's try the butter. Butter. Now, if you're going to do one thing fresh in your entire kitchen for everything that you make. Make it fresh herbs. It makes a huge difference in everything. Even just the smell even. But this butter, it smells so good. Okay, let's try. This is the best thing I have ever made. Oh my God. I, I don't even know what to do right now. <laughs> this is so good, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, I, this butter with the herbs and the garlic, it is, and the jalapeno cheddar like together. It's just, there's so many flavors happening right now. Oh my God. This, this is the best thing I've ever made. That's it. That's it. It's my new favorite food. Like, that's it. It's creamy and spicy and tangy from the cheddar and so like fresh and green from the herbs and then the garlic is like so savory and a little bit of spicy. 
There are just so many flavors just like smacking me in the face right now. I'm just gonna keep this, but like, <sighs> I can't function anymore. My brain's like, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna make this butter and use it for like garlic bread. Like just make the butter and then put it on like French bread and then grill it. Oh, that sounds good. I'm just gonna keep this in the house all the time. I'm gonna make this like literally every day. I need so much butter. This is so freaking good. Even if you don't make these scones, make the butter. You should retitle this video, butter. Fresh herbs are so good. I should stop chewing and talking at the same time. That's rude, I apologize. I mean, this one, this one is really good too. The cinnamon, the walnuts, it's like, it's a whole different flavor combination. And that's the thing, like with scones, you can do any kind of flavor combination you can think of. Sweet, savory, you can put meat, you can put nuts, you can put fruit. The possibilities are endless. It's just so, such a, such a good base dough to make into whatever you want. I would recommend using a half cup to a cup of toppings and additives and whatever, and not much more than a cup if you're going to because it'll be kind of too much in the dough and it won't bake properly. What I ended up doing for both of these because I had, I was using raisins and walnuts for the sweet one and I was using cheese and jalapenos for the jalapeno one. I just split it half and half, so half cup raisins, half cup walnuts in this one and half cup jalapeno, half cup cheddar in this one. <sighs> that combination is, I'm gonna gain like 20 pounds. It's so freaking good. If you guys have any interesting flavor combinations that you do at home for scones, let me know in the comments. It's really fun to see what other people do and try it yourself or get ideas from other people. I mean, I just used whatever I had right now in my kitchen because that's what I had on hand, but it turned out really good. Let me know if you guys try them and what flavor combinations you come up with. And if you do anything in your kitchen, make this butter. It is life-changing. If you like this video or you learned something, give it a like. If you'd like to learn more, subscribe to my channel. I upload every Friday. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.